even if the child you are told can read, it's always important actually to check that out. I've got a great reading test. It's the Wyatt, the Weschler, whatever they are. And it's, the reading is in three parts. Uh, there's reading accuracy, and the children read through a list of individual words, so there's no context to give them any hints. And um, the, you see where they get to, and sometimes they stop at a certain point and can't go further, and sometimes it's very hit and miss, and you can notice how persistent they are, how hard they have to work to decode that word. So all that's kind of interesting, because uh, which is why actually just if somebody, if I had a technician who could go and do the assessment for me, it really wouldn't be the same. I, they could come up with a set of figures and numbers, but I like to, I like to be able to see how the children are approaching tasks. So the, the reading test, A, you can see where they get to, and you end up seeing how well this child is reading relative to its peer group. You get a score which can tell you exactly where that child is compared with uh, the national average of children within a three-month age band. And it's called a standard score. And it can be, I know, confusing to parents, but I mean, a standard score of 100 is average, 90 to 110 is the average range. But in a way, I don't expect parents to understand that any more than I understand what the car mechanic's done to my car, as long as she tells me the implications, mm. which I really hope I can do for parents, but at the same time, you need to include those figures in your report, because at some stage, um, you just might need to be able to have to explain why you've said what you what you've said. But um, so there's reading accuracy. Then they do uh, this fabulous test called pseudo word decoding, and there is a list of nonsense words: pom, boom, um, craft, vastinity, austique. And this test is fabulous because it absolutely picks up dis dyslexic children, even if they're 16, 17, 18, and have totally compensated. They may be reading extremely well for accuracy and extremely well for meaning, but you put this list of words in front of them and they're almost guaranteed to stick extra letters in, take letters out. And I found that your non-dyslexic seven-year-old can read this whole list beautifully, effortlessly. It's so unfair, you know, no, no problem at all. But your dyslexic older child will, will stumble and trip over these words. And you realise then that although it, it's not obvious on a day-to-day -day basis, the reading process must remain quite hard work, even if you have largely compensated. So those two are useful. The third element of the reading test is reading comprehension. And... Um, that is quite good. They read um, three, four or five long texts silently, which are followed by questions. They read some short texts um, aloud, allowing me to tick off some target words. I time them on a longer text. Um, and again, just th that you might get a very high score on answering the questions, but and knowing that the child has actually taken seconds, I mean, these are done in seconds, but has really exceeded the limit to get you into the bottom quartile. You kind of see how much effort the reading process really is. So those three tests uh, in combination do tell a lot about how a child is reading. And that, so that's pretty useful. Math is not so good. Um, Jane would confirm that. <laughs> she always says that we don't do maths. Uh, maths you need probably a whole day yeah. to do a proper assessment because there's so many aspects of maths. But the test that I do actually goes up very rapidly, uh, starting with 2 plus 2 and going up to some pretty nice sums for A-level students, you know, in four sides. <laughs> so, but what I, I do try and observe the children doing it, because you do find that you notice uh, whether they're having difficulties with the process, either they're making silly errors that they go along, but they know basically what they're doing, or you see whether they are trying to follow a procedure that they're not quite sure how to do, and they make stupid, stupid answers that couldn't make sense, but they're not applying any logic. And so actually trying to notice what kind of mistakes they make um, is, is useful, but it's, it's still quite a crude test. Uh, sorry? Is a, the, the maths as, as a element of the Wyatt. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So those are the, that's getting an idea of how the child is functioning relative to other children their age. Whether, and there are certain patterns, of course, which 
you can get bright children whose reading accuracy and the pseudo-word decoding will be well below average, but their comprehension score will be well above. So unless you've done all three, if you just heard their comp knew their comprehension ability, you wouldn't understand that actually underneath that it's, it takes time and effort. Then you get other children who are the other way around, who can look at the page, read it quite easily, can go through a pseudo-word decoding, and then can't do the comprehension. They just don't seem to be processing what they've read at all. So it does come up in all, all kinds of combinations. And then I would say quite a lot of children I see as well have absolutely no difficulties at all. They are the ones very often who are more dyspraxic -y.